Good morning. We are looking at chapter 10.9, looking at uh, change in angular momentum. I hope that you can look at that equation right there and see a correlation, just like we've done with most of chapter 10, to our linear uh, variables uh, back in the unit uh, 7 through 9, we looked at momentum, and with momentum, we said that a uh, impulse, F times T, equals a change in momentum. You're seeing the same thing here. Instead, we're talking about a torque uh, exerted over a period of time causes something to start to uh, angularly rotate, right? And there's a change in angular momentum that occurs. So hopefully, you can recognize that correlation. Um, and then we just have some uh, substitution of variables that we have to do to an otherwise pretty easy concept. Uh, I think I have two examples here today. A lab group sets up a net torque experiment as shown, the wheel with a mass of 2000 grams and a radius of 20 centimeters, has a string wrapped around it and a student pulls on the string, exerting a force of two newtons for three seconds. If the wheel was held at rest initially, part A, what was the change in angular momentum? So let's start with the fact that like if we saw this on a test that we, you know, especially like a final exam or an AP test where we've got everything mixed together, that we identify, first of all, change in angular momentum means that we're looking at this is the money question for part A. All right. So then, of course, we look at our cheat sheet. We see that we have this equation here. So if we say that uh, delta L equals torque times time, basically, right? Uh, amount of time that elapsed. We can see the time that's there. Um, and then for torque, we know that torque is equal to force times the radius. So we end up with F times R times T. So see the correlation here? It's really just bringing in the R into this, isn't it? Um, and in fact, we even saw the formula last time we took notes that said uh, that we could use this as a form of uh, angular momentum. So the linear momentum times the radius, uh, and, and really remember that it's supposed to be, uh, it's a cross product at, an a, at a 90 degree angle, perpendicular. But regardless, that's how everything works. So we don't need to worry about that. For us, it's just a math formula we're plugging into. And so two newtons times a radius of 20 centimeters, let's call that 0.2 meters, and then times three seconds. Oh, forgot the seconds there. Can I squeeze that in? and multiply all of that out. Um, I don't think I have an answer slide. Let's just see if I do have an answer slide. I do have an answer slide, uh, 1.2, and look at the units that we have there, Newton meter seconds. Yesterday, we talked about the units in terms of just looking at that as the kilograms meter squared over seconds when we did it this way, but now kind of like when we were talking about impulse and momentum back in the chapter seven through nine, um, that we could look at this as kilogram meters over seconds for momentum versus newtons times seconds for uh, the impulse, and they're really the same unit. So here we end up with, I already forgot what I said, 1.2, and then just writing out the units as we see them. Remember, in, in, on the AP test, you have to, have to put your units in the final answer, but you don't have to put them in the intermediate steps. So if there's something confusing, uh, here, I actually am using the intermediate step units in order to figure out what to put as an answer. For momentum, since it doesn't have a nice, cute little package that we put it into, like how we did with force for, to become Newtons, um, everything's written out there. Part B says, what is the final angular speed of the wheel? So back up here, back in chapter 7 through 9, we said M, sorry, pen won't keep up with me, MV final minus MV initial. So for delta L, we should be able to say uh, MVR final minus MVR initial, which is interesting because if we say it that way, uh, which part is the final and the initial? Could be the radius, right? We could extend, um, we did this on the last notes, uh, change the radius, the distribution of mass by the radius. Um, but I don't think that's the best choice here. For this one here, I think that especially since it talks about angular speed, so part B's money question is omega F, then I think that it would be better for us to use for part B, um, delta L equals I times omega F minus I times omega I. Of course, omega I is zero because it started at rest. So now we have a substitution for I as MR squared and then omega F. 
Sorry, pen's not keeping up with me. Um, so 1.2 equals the mass. Now this is the mass of the wheel, uh, two kilograms times the radius of the wheel, 0.2 meters squared, and then solving for omega f. All right, and I did have an answer slide, so let's just go to that to get that final answer. Um, everything looks the same, good, 15 radians per second. How did all of those units come out to be radians per second? Does it matter? You can go through and derive all of that if you want to. I think it's a great practice, but in the end, just remember that you just need to have the units of the final answer when all is said and done. We know that um, angular speed is, is measured in radians per second, so therefore just tack them on there and we're done. Last example, uh, we've been seeing this one here. Uh, we have a lab that was similar to this, and I'm not sure if the lab question included the part B with the change in angular momentum. Hopefully it did. Uh, but in the end, uh, this obviously is a very common problem, so we should expect this for the chapter test as well. A lab group sets up a net torque experiment as shown. The wheel with a mass of 1,000 grams, radius of 35 centimeters, has a string wrapped around it, 100 gram mass attached. The mass is held at rest and released. It falls one meter in 1.5 seconds. So now we're looking at some motion variable stuff. Falls a distance of one meter and it does this in a time of 1.5 seconds. Um, part A says, what is the acceleration of the mass? So it's not free falling because of the fact that it's gonna be spinning the wheel, but in terms of just looking at the mass itself, um, I think we would have two choices, obviously, right? I mean, my first gut instinct was to write down F net equals, and I'm gonna use this in a few minutes anyway, so I'll just do it anyway. Fg minus Ft. So mass times acceleration equals mass times gravity minus Ft. Our issue here, though, is we don't know the acceleration. I mean, well, that was kind of a dumb thing to say. We're trying to find the acceleration. We don't know the tension force. Um, so therefore, this has too many unknowns. So it's, it's pretty common we've noticed that um, in these kinds of problems, the motion equation is pretty much always the first thing that we have to do, right? So really for part A, if you're given motion variables, you need to figure out what motion equation you're going to use for things in normal circumstances, measuring distance and time are the two easiest variables to measure. This is the common equation for definitely for finding acceleration. We also know this is a common equation, one half VI plus VF times T for finding the final speed, right? Because now all we need is just a meter stick and a stopwatch and we can conduct a lot of physics to find acceleration or find final speed. Make sure that you know that. Um, one meter equals zero plus one half of A times 1.5 squared. Online, I know I have an answer to part A, but I didn't finish parts B and C. I put a line through it to remind me to go back and finish it, and I did not do that. So A is equal to two, sorry, I'm doing the algebra in my head, multiply two to the other side, and then divide 1.5 squared to the other side. How about 0.89? That seems like a pretty reasonable acceleration. Um, I, you know, significant digits is not an issue. Maybe I'll just round this to 0.9 meters per second squared. Of course, I've got the whole number on my calculator screen for when I do the next part. Um, I think I'm going to skip to part C before I do part B, because um, finding the tension in the string, I already kind of defaulted to that equation right here with the, looking at just the free body diagram portion, not even looking at the wheel yet. So if I know that the acceleration is 0 0.9, I've got a 100 gram mass, that would be 0.1 kilograms times 0.9 equals uh, one Newton minus Ft and then Ft equals, so 0.9 times 0.1 and then minus one, how about 0.91? So instead of being 0.888 repeating, it's 0.911 repeating. So recognize that when the answer looks the same because of rounding, it's not, it's just purely coincidental based on the numbers that I made up for this problem. 
So there's the tension for part C, there's the acceleration for part A, and then the new part to this is what we want to do to find the change in angular momentum. So uh, I think I want to fall back on the same equation that we just saw for part A. I, I didn't solve this one out so, uh, for part, for example, one, same equation. I didn't solve this out, so therefore I just have to think it out as we go. So if I say that delta L equals the torque caused the times, the change in time, the torque, um, I omega F minus I omega I equals F times R times time. I'm going to put a little sub T right there. Okay, now I think that's pretty good. I think we've got everything down to what we need. Almost, I guess there's one more substitution. M R squared times omega F equals F T times R times T. I don't believe I've left anything out. Um, our mass, our big mass of the wheel is one kilogram. The radius of the wheel is 0.35 meters. Of course, we could have canceled out an R, huh? but I've already wrote it down, so I'm just going to go with it. And then our tension force we just found, our radius again at 0.35, and it fell for 1.5 seconds. So that was the whole time that the string was pulling down on the uh, wheel. Okay. I was a little bit intimidated with this problem going into it because I'm like, well, I hadn't solved it out. But when we really get into it, it's really not that hard. It's stuff that we already understand um, that's just put into a little bit different perspective. All right, so 0.911 times 0.35 times 1.5 divided by 0.35 squared. I know, waste of time on that one. And that should be it. And I've got 3.9 radians per second squared. I can live with that as an answer. Radians per second, not squared, sorry. A bunch of people just walked by outside the window and I was wondering what's going on. Um, that's it, okay? Chapter 10, homework number 10 is our homework assignment here. I'm gonna put it on that slide. You'll notice questions 44 and 45. These are actually from multiple choice tests uh, from, uh, I'm not sure what year, either 2014 or 2015. So take your time on these and be conscientious. You'll recognize that number 45 has a little bit of similarity to the last conclusion question on the lab that was assigned. So think that one out because these are the these are obviously the way that the AP test is going to address what we're talking about today. Number 43 is mathematical. That's the way we address it in class. So uh, be conscientious. You only have three questions and uh, figure these out. All right, that's it.